guys, today we are going to do the humerus. Um, the humerus is the bone of your upper arm. You can see size-wise, right? It makes sense that it would fit right about here. Um, <clears throat> you can see that the top of the humerus has this rounded um, protrusion that's called a head. Multiple bones have a head. It's always kind of like the big round part. Um, <clears throat> the head of the humerus happens to be very round. The head of the humerus is where um, the humerus forms a joint with the scapula. We looked at the scapula or shoulder blade in um, a video yesterday. You can see that the head of the humerus fits right into the glenoid cavity of the scapula and that forms your shoulder joint just like this. Right? It's a nice ball and socket joint. So we said this was the head of the humerus, the rounded part. The humerus has an anatomical neck and a surgical neck. And just like on us, the neck is what connects your head, right, to the body, while the neck is what connects the head to the rest of the bone, or typically the shaft of the bone. Now, the anatomical neck is this region here, just around the rounded part. So like, literally the part that it just circles around right here. That's the anatomical neck. The surgical neck is the thin part of the bone right here, where this whole big end of the bone, where the epiphysis um, connects to the shaft or the diaphysis, um, that's the surgical neck. So like the thin point right here where it connects, that would be the surgical neck. So anatomical neck is up here, surgical neck is here. Um, now, when we look here at the top of the bone, um, it would sit in your arm like this, so kind of like the anterior aspect and then the lateral aspect. We have um, two tubercles. A tubercle is just like a bumpy protrusion from a bone, and this is typically where a muscle is going to connect, so where like the tendon will go into the bone or where ligaments will connect. Um, here, these two tubercles that are up by the head are the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle. The lesser tubercle is towards the front. So again, if this were to sit in my body like this, the lesser tubercle would be this one right here that points towards the front. And the greater tubercle is this one over here that points out more laterally. So it's this bulge that's lateral. If I flip the bone around to the back like this, so if you were looking at the humerus from the back, you could see the greater tubercle kind of sticking out right here. Right? You can't see the lesser one though because it's more in the front. Again, this is the front view. You'll notice there's this little groove right here that goes between those two tubercles. That groove um, is called the intertubercular solstice. Intertubercular solstice. Um, it's also called the bicipital groove. Um, bicipital groove because the tendon from the biceps brachii goes right through this little groove right here. Right? So lesser tubercle in the front, greater tubercle is out lateral. Intertubercular solstice is the groove right between them. Now, um, if you go kind of down about not quite halfway, um, there's another little bumpy protrusion that's present here. This is called the deltoid tuberosity. So it's kind of like anterior lateral, um, the deltoid tuberosity. It's kind of difficult to see, but the bone does stick out a little bit right here. Um, and when you feel the bone, you'll feel that it is bumpy. That's a tuberosity, so it's where we have a tendon or ligament inserting into the bone. Um, and it's called the deltoid tuberosity because that's where the, the tendon from the deltoid muscle inserts. Your deltoid muscle is your shoulder muscle right here. So it makes sense that the tendon would come off um, from the apex here and insert into your humerus right about here. Now, the radial groove is a groove that kind of comes around the bone just underneath the deltoid tuberosity. It's really difficult to see on some bones, this bone especially. Um, this is synthetic bone and they didn't make the radial groove very well. But if I turn this bone around to the back, this is when you should be able to see it. So from the back, there should be a groove that comes like right here um, by the deltoid tuberosity. Again, you can't really see very well, 
but you can see how the tuberosity sticks out just a little bit. And there's a little groove back behind it here, which is the radial groove. Again, really difficult to see. Um, it's not something that I would easily ask on an exam, hint, hint. Okay, so that's the top of the humerus. Then when we make our way down the shaft and we get to the bottom of the humerus, um, <clears throat> this is the distal epiphysis. Um, again, epiphyses are the widened ends of the bones where they typically form joints. So here we're looking at the distal one, the one at the bottom of the humerus. Now, um, remember that when we look down here, this is where the elbow joint is formed. So we're gonna have the ulna sit, um, we're gonna have the ulna sit right here and form a joint with the humerus. And we're also going to have the radius um, sit here laterally and form a joint, sorry, this is why, form a joint with the humerus. So we've got a couple processes down here that we're gonna use to form joints with the ulna and the radius. Um, first, before we get there, we'll see we have a medial epicondyle and a lateral epicondyle. These are the little protrusions that you see on either side of the um, elbow. You can palpate these, right? You can, you can easily feel or palpate um, these epicondyles on either side. And when you're looking at the epicondyles, the little, again, little protrusions that stick out on either side, we name them medial and lateral. If you need to know which side is medial, just look at the top of the humerus. The humerus attaches to the, the shoulder socket. It, it attaches to the scapula where the head is. So the rounded part of the humerus shows you which part of the humerus is medial, right, where it's attaching. So if you follow the head down, this bulge that's sticking out, this is the medial epicondyle. You can see it really well from the back, right, the medial epicondyle. And then that means the smaller one over here is the lateral epicondyle. Um, then we have two processes down here. Again, they connect to the ulna and to the radius. The trochlea and the capitulum are the names of these. The capitulum is this rounded ball shape process that you see right here. I remember that because it's round and capitulum, the top of the Capitol building is round. So capital capitulum. Um, this round process from the humerus forms a joint with this perfectly circular head on top of the radius. So it sits on the ball just like this, just like that. And when you pronate and supinate your arm, it twists. Remember pronation and supination are when you turn your arm, right? pronation and supination. When you're doing that, you're twisting the head of the radius on this capitulum. Also, when you um, flex and extend your elbow, right? the head of the radius is moving on this capitulum. Now, the other um, process is the trochlea. The trochlea has kind of like these two parts that stick out and then a thinner groove in the middle, right? But this whole thing is the trochlea. Um, and then again, you can see that in the back as well. You can't really see the capitulum in the back, but you can see the trochlea in the back. Now, the, um, <clears throat> the ulna, it has this nice U on the top. The, this little U on top of the ulna is called, called the trochlear notch. And what do you know? It sits perfectly on the trochlea, right? So that trochlea is for the ulna. Then the last three things that we have are just a few fossa. A fossa is a little like smooth depression um, they're typically in conjunction with joints. So we have three fossa that are present down here at the distal part of the humerus. The fossa in the front, it's this little depression that you see right here, right just above the trochlea. That is called the coronoid fossa. It's there for the coronoid of the ulna to slide into. So this front little process on the ulna, which we'll talk about probably in tomorrow's video, this front little process is the coronoid process. And look, when you bend your elbow, 
that coronoid process is going to fit right up into that coronoid fossa. Right? So this little hole in the front above the trochlea is the coronoid fossa. Notice there's also a tiny little hole or depression right here above the capitulum. That's called the radial fossa because the radius, the head of the radius, slides in there when we bend our elbow. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but when we bend the elbow, right, the head of the radius, this ridge here on the radius, is going to go right into that radial fossa. So looking at the front of the humerus, this depression above, the, this is the trochlea, above the trochlea is the coronoid fossa. This over here is the capitulum. Above the capitulum is the radial fossa. Then in the back of the humerus, we have this large fossa or larger depression here, and that is the olecranon fossa. The olecranon fossa is here for the olecranon to slide into when the elbow is straightened. So the olecranon is this large process on the top of the ulna. So the coronoid process is on the bottom, the olecranon is on the top. If you look at the elbow here, right, I've put my ulna on the um, trochlea, and then when I straighten it out, notice how this olecranon slides into that olecranon fossa. Okay, it goes right into that olecranon fossa. Um, <clears throat> looking at the olecranon fossa and comparing it to the coronoid fossa, that allows you to see which side of the humerus is on the front and which side goes on the back. Um, the olecranon fossa is bigger. So this bigger depression is always going to go in the back. So I know that it goes this way, right? This is the anterior aspect or the front of my humerus um, and the large hole goes in the back. That allows me to tell, okay, is this my right humerus or my left humerus? I know that the head, right, the head of the humerus faces in towards my body. So it makes sense that this would be uh, my right humerus. My left and right might be flipped with you guys because of the video, but I, this is my right arm, I promise. Um, this would be my right humerus. It would go on this arm. It doesn't go like this because now the olecranon fossa is facing forward, the big hole is facing forward, and that's not correct. It goes towards the back, right? And then the head faces towards my arm so that it can form a nice joint with the glenoid cavity of my scapula. That's it for the humerus. I know that was quite a bit. If you have any questions, let me know.